This video lecture is going to be about the division by zero error. Now you've come across this problem perhaps in your bowling scores or your scores average program. So this is what happens. I'm going to run my bowling scores program and for a testing I want to try no numbers. I just put in my sentinel negative zero, negative one and I get a zero division error. Division by zero. So we know that the program works. If I run and actually put in numbers I don't get this error. I only get the error when I put in no numbers. So what's happening? Well, I'm going to initialize count at zero, and my sum is at zero. And then if I start with a negative one, the loop never happens. So count and sum never change. Then when I come to do my average, I have division by zero. Hmm. We don't want to have any errors in our programs. So even if I don't enter any numbers at all, I do not want to have an error. What can I do about this? Well, my average is my average, okay? So, I don't want to call this function if I don't, if count is still zero, because that is ultimately going to give me this error. So let's take a look in our main, and right here I'm calling average, count average, but I only want to call this if count is greater than zero. Then I don't get an error. So let's just throw in an if statement. When in doubt, throw in an if statement. So if count is greater than zero, then I'm going to call my average. Let's see if this fixes our problem. I'm going to run it. I'm going to start with my sentinel, negative 1. Still have an error because it's going to look for average. So I didn't calculate average at all. I didn't get a division by error problem, but I'm still going to get a problem because I don't have a value for average. So I'm going to need to throw in an else. So I'm just going to set my average to be 0. I need it to be something because I'm printing it later on. Now an alternative could be that I do my printing here as well. So I could take this print statement, and I could put it here, and just not print anything at all. Okay. So that's one choice. Or I can leave it where it is and just assign average to something. So let's see what happens with this particular solution. Put everything back. So I'm going to run it, I'm going to put in my sentinel, and okay, so no error. That's the good news. But I do get average is zero, I get high score is zero, and low score is 300. That doesn't really make any sense. Okay. So here's just a little trick you can use in Python. There is a value called none. So instead of setting average to zero, what if I set it to none? Now since this is an actual keyword in Python. I am going to capitalize the N. Let's run it. Let's put in my negative one, and I get none. Okay. So that looks better. Could I do the same thing for high and score, high and low? Sure. So I'm going to come right here. I'm going to do high equals none, and low equals none. So it's just a little bit of trickery. When I put in negative one, I get no errors, and it makes sense. Bowling score and average is none, high is none, low is none, because there were no scores entered. So the key is I'm going to have to make sure that count has an actual number, that it's not zero before I call average, and if I don't call average, make sure I assign it something. Now this worked great for my bowling scores. Uh, let's also take a look at our uh, scores average program. Could I have the same error here? I'm going to run the program, I'm going to do um, 1, and I'm going to enter 0 scores. But sure enough, 0 division error. What if I use um, the third choice? Where I have a sentinel, 0 to quit, I do 0 to quit, 0 division error. So I'm still having this problem where my count starts at 0, I never change it, so division by 0. Can we do the same solution here? This is where I call average, and if my counter is still zero, I don't want to call it. So let's throw in an if statement. So if count, I use counter, is greater than zero, I'm going to call my average. Now I could also indent print results, and that could solve everything. Let's try this. So I'm going to enter one, zero scores. No error. It, 
It's looking pretty good. But maybe I want to print something. So I could put in an else. And I could just say something like no scores entered. So it doesn't look like you just kind of glossed over it. So let's try this again. I'm going to enter no scores. Okay, and so it tells me no scores entered, and it's going to ask me again. Okay, everything's working pretty good, but I'm going to show you one more potential problem. So if you're being a really good tester, you're going to try all kinds of things. So I'm going to enter this again. This time I'm going to put in three scores. So I have my sum, my scores, my average. It's going to ask me what do I want to do, and this time I want to quit. Well, I quit, but look what it did. It printed my sum and my number and my average all over again. I wanted to quit. So why is it printing this again? It's all part of my while loop. So even though I chose a five here, I put the five here, I'm still going to print something. Okay, not great. So there's a few things we could do to change this. I could do a modification read. I could ask at the end instead of at the beginning and that would help. So one thing we could do, I could change this to, you know, asking my choice here. And then I could put this at the end. And then I might want to just do a little something with my intro here. So, intro. And then if you want to do intro again, I do recommend it. So just by kind of moving things around from our last lesson, let's see if this kind of fixes our problem. Take out some of this extra. So I'm going to run it. I'm going to put in three numbers. Now I want to quit, and I don't want anything to print, except thank you for running it. So it's another great opportunity to use your priming read and your modification read to eliminate results that you don't want.